In the last video, we began defining operators in the context of quantum mechanics. In this video, we're going to be covering four types of important operators that come up in quantum mechanics. The inverse, the hermitian, the unitary, and the projection operators. Let's start this lecture by talking about inverse operators. Suppose we have an operator a hat that's linear. We talked about linear operators in the previous video. I'll put the link in the description. The inverse of a hat is another operator, a hat inverse, such that when a hat and a hat inverse are both applied in sequence, the resulting operator is just the identity i hat. Note that the identity operator is like the generalized version of the identity matrix. When it operates on a bra or ket, you get the same bra or ket that you put in originally. Inverse operators are useful when you're quote unquote dividing two operators. For example, two linear operators a hat and b hat dividing each other could be rewritten as a hat times b hat inverse. Now you could also write it as b hat inverse times a hat. Usually the problem will specify which order you're concerned with. The last thing to mention about inverse operators are a couple of their properties, which you can prove for yourself using the definition of inverse operators that I've given you. The next and probably the most important operator is the Hermitian operator. But before I talk about the Hermitian operator, let me briefly describe the Hermitian adjoint or the Hermitian conjugate. For a complex number or scalar a, the Hermitian conjugate denoted by this a cross is just the complex conjugate of that number. For a ket vector, however, the Hermitian conjugate is just the corresponding bra. And for a bra, the Hermitian conjugate is just the corresponding ket. For an operator, however, it's more complicated. Suppose I have the following inner product, between the bra phi and the ket a hat times psi. Now the Hermitian adjoint of a hat is an operator a hat cross, such that the inner product involving the bra corresponding to a hat cross times phi, and the ket given by psi, is equal to this first inner product. The Hermitian adjoint a hat cross, by the way, obeys this relationship for any combination of phi and psi. Just keep that in mind. Now if you don't like switching the location of the operator from ket to bra, another way to define the Hermitian conjugate is to use the following definition. Now here in going from the regular operator a hat to its Hermitian conjugate a hat cross, all you do is switch the locations of the phi and psi, and take the complex conjugate of the right hand side. There's a bunch of properties of the Hermitian conjugate that are worth mentioning, but I won't prove them here. If necessary, I'll prove them as we encounter them later on in our study. But for now, I'm just going to put them here for your reference. Now just to give you some intuition about what a Hermitian conjugate is, I'll give an example of an operator in finite dimensional space, which is just a fancy term for a matrix. For instance, if I had a matrix or operator a hat given by 1, 0, i, 1, then its Hermitian conjugate would be its conjugate transpose, which is just 1, negative i, 0, and 1. You can check that this is true by using the definition of the Hermitian operator. If I had two generic vectors given by phi, which is a, comma, b, and psi, which is c, comma, d, where a, b, c, and d are complex numbers, then if I plug everything into both sides of the definition, simplifying the left hand side will give me a conjugate times c plus b conjugate times d plus b conjugate times c times i. I can apply the same procedure to the right hand side and verify that the answer is the same. So the conjugate transpose is indeed the Hermitian conjugate. Just a quick note that when I went from this line to this line, I changed the vector inside the bra of the inner product to its conjugate transpose when I took it out, mainly because the bra, as I mentioned in a previous video, is just the conjugate transpose of the ket vector. So now that we've discussed the Hermitian conjugate, let's now talk about Hermitian operators. A Hermitian operator is simply an operator that's equal to its Hermitian conjugate. An anti-Hermitian operator, on the other hand, equals the negative of its Hermitian conjugate. But for quantum mechanics, the Hermitian operator is probably going to be the most relevant one. Now an example of Hermitian operators is the 2 by 2 identity operator, obviously because it's equal to its conjugate transpose. 
Meanwhile, the matrix M given by I00I has a Hermitian conjugate of negative I00-I, which is just negative M hat. So here, M hat would be anti-Hermitian. The next type of operator we'll discuss is the unitary operator. A linear operator U hat is unitary if its Hermitian conjugate equals its inverse. One important property of unitary operators is that the product of two unitary operators U hat and V hat is also unitary. Again, I won't prove this at the moment, partly because this is a quantum mechanics and not a linear algebra lecture series, and partly because I don't think it'll add much to your knowledge about operators. The last operator I'm going to cover in this video is called a projection operator. A projection operator P hat satisfies two conditions. The first condition is that it's Hermitian, and the second condition is that it's equal to its own square. A classic example of a projection operator is once again the identity operator. In this case, the identity operator is essentially just projecting your vector onto itself. So you can intuitively see why the identity operator qualifies as a projection operator, even without verifying the fact that it's Hermitian or that it's equal to its own square. Now like all the other operators discussed earlier, the projection operator also has a bunch of properties which I won't prove in this video. The first property is that if two projection operators commute, meaning that their products are commutative, then their product is also a projection operator. The second property is that two projection operators P1 and P2 hat are orthogonal if their product is zero. This is more of a definition rather than a property if you're being technical. The third property is that even though the sum of multiple projection operators typically isn't a projection operator, it still can be a projection operator as long as the projection operators within the sum are mutually orthogonal. What do I mean by this? I mean that P1 hat is orthogonal to P2 hat, P3 hat, and so on. Similarly, P2 hat is orthogonal to P3 hat, P4 hat, etc, etc. You get the idea. That's what I mean by mutually orthogonal. They're all orthogonal to each other. And that should do it for projection operators. So, that's the end of the video. In the next lesson, we're going to start talking about commutators, which will eventually lead to a proof of the generalized uncertainty principle. Which, by the way, isn't a physics law, it's more of a mathematical theorem. And that's it. Thank you for watching, and if you enjoyed the video, feel free to like and subscribe. This is the faculty of Khan, signing out.